in the house of the Lord this evening on night three of Homecoming Revival. Come on, go ahead, put those hands together. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Amen.
Christ is my firm foundation He's the rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking Oh, I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would He 
Let's go to the key of F today on this homecoming revival night. Let's sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Sing, no, oh. together. We find 
Church, we are so glad that you're with us tonight on our homecoming revival, celebrating 69 years of God's blessings in this house. This is a house where we give glory to God. There's only one celebrity in this house, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why we lift up and glorify his name. And I'm telling you what, he'll draw all men into him, won't he? And I've seen so many people come here from so far in just this week alone. We've had people here from North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Alabama, Hawaii, Texas, Michigan, Arizona, Arkansas, Mississippi, New York, Florida, Illinois, Virginia, California, Montana, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, Massachusetts, Missouri, Germany, and Switzerland. Can we give everyone that came from afar a hand? And I tell you tonight, we are absolutely blessed in the house tonight. We are blessed because we have a preacher in the house tonight. Pastor, Pastor Greg Atkins, he pastors Refuge Church, a dynamic and vibrant church in Enterprise, Alabama. He is the president of the Refuge School of Ministry. He preaches with the anointing that will stir the hearts of the people and draw everyone close to the Lord. Please help me in welcoming tonight Pastor Greg Atkins. Amen. Praise the Lord. We love you, Pastor Greg, and your family. You are no stranger to this place. You've been preaching here for many years, and we welcome you. So glad you're here. But we recognize that we have ministers from all over the world with us. So if you're out of town and you're a minister, will you please stand so we can just say that we love you as well. Thank you so much, and God bless you. We want everyone here to be blessed tonight. Last night, we received handfuls of purpose. And what a message. I was even thinking today, I want to hear the message that he was talking about his message. Anyone think about that too? I want that one too. Someone go find that for me. I have to go call him and find out where that is so we can... I guess get a cassette player and play that one too. If he's only got it on a cassette. Does anyone here have a cassette player? Maybe we can borrow still. A few. I see two hands in the back. A few maybe. We might have to go, I don't know, Goodwill and find us one here. Oh, Grandma and Grandpa Bates. I bet they'll pull through, won't they? They've probably got it. And I bet it looks even better when they bought it. That's the thing about these two. They leave everything better than when they first got it. So... I'm telling you what, we were blessed last night, but I'm telling you, anytime you hear the Word of God, you are blessed. The Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, but when it's preached with the anointing, I'm going to tell you what, it breaks the yokes of bondage. It's the anointing that destroys every yoke. I'm grateful for what we heard last night, but I know that God has more in store. There's more to hear. The Bible says, eyes have not seen nor have ears heard, nor is it of the heart of man what God has in store for those who love Him, to those who are the called according to His purpose. There is no ending to the blessings of being a child of God. Can you hear an amen in God's house? Amen. We want you to be blessed. Do us a favor. Go to the central lobby. 
There are some t-shirts for sale available to you. Wonderful places for you to just to kind of see all the different uh, uh, designs that we have. And so there'll be a blessing to your life. So make sure you go over to our central lobby. But we are blessed tonight. So can we say our offering declaration in faith together? As we bring in today's tithes, offerings, and over and above giving, we are believing the Lord for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs and better jobs, checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarships, creative ideas, finding money, healing for our spirit, soul, and body, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost, and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Say this loud with me. We are blessed and we will be a blessing to others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe it, can I hear an amen? amen. We talked about an outpouring of the Holy Ghost and I just have to testify tonight that in the past month, two of my four children have been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I was wondering when it was going to happen. I said, God, Megan and I have been praying and fasting, and I know I can't make it happen, but I can be obedient, and I can seek the face of the Lord. And so sometimes things might come maybe when you think they, they should, but I'm glad that He answers His people, and I'm glad that He's pouring out His Spirit. And I'm glad it's upon my children, but I can tell you, I also want it upon your children, upon your grandchildren. Let the Holy Ghost be poured out upon His people. You shall receive power after that which the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I'm ready for the power to be manifested in every child's life as the Holy Ghost is being poured out today. Amen. Three ways that you can give tonight. You can give by uh, texting the word GIVE to 859-359-3997. That's our text to give number. But you can also give online at cfcky.com or you can give in person with a check payable to CFC or cash in an envelope with your name on it. Those watching online, we are so delighted every single week to see that you are watching with us and you're participating with us. But we're unbelievably blessed to know that many of you are giving week after week after week because you love this ministry and you're ready to see it go forward. We have a building project that we have started and we are excited to see it happen and we want to see it finished and we want to see it debt free. And we thank you, all those that are watching online, that are in service with us, but have also jumped in your giving. So we're grateful and we appreciate you. If you'd like to send a check in the mail, you can send that to 11875 Taylor Mill Road, Independence, Kentucky, 41051. Let's go before the Lord in prayer tonight. God, we thank you so much for your spirit that is in this house. Thank you that Jesus is our firm foundation. Thank you, Jesus, that all other ground is sinking sand, but we can stand upon the rock. And God, thank you that we can worship you in your house, God. Lord, we're thankful, God, that we can worship you with our hands clapping, our feet dancing, and our mouths shouting our praises. But God, we are also so grateful and so honored tonight that we can also worship you with our giving. So Lord, move upon this offering. Meet every need, God, and with every dollar that is given, let it go to represent souls for your kingdom in jesus name and the church says amen. amen please stand with me and you may give it this time tonight this is a clapping song
need some amens, some hallelujahs, and some glory to God in the house tonight. Can I hear that? Come on, say, clap your hands now. Go now.
Before you're seated, find you somebody you know, somebody you don't know, somebody you thought you knew, somebody you're wondering who they are. Introduce yourself and say, I'm so glad to see you tonight. tonight and by the way we had a little over 40,000 watching last night we got more tonight so evidently the word is a spreading around but we want to welcome everyone right now over 40 something thousand watching by internet live in this service we're so grateful that you're here let's give them a great and a welcome Welcome to the family. Praise the Lord. You know, today, we're just so thankful. You know, could you put that video on without the sound so I can talk a little bit? Well, I think that thing's only two minutes. And, it can't be two minutes and 75 seconds. <laughs> and it might be. We'll find out. Praise the Lord. You all can be looking at that, but we're so thankful because how God has blessed us. And throughout the week, even tonight, people have handed me checks. They said, this is from my wife and I. This is from Illinois. This is from, from this certain place. This is from this. Uh, other checks have come in. 2,500 here tonight before church. Another thousand, a thousand, another thousand. And then in the mail today, we got a check for 9,000 and another check for 20,000. You know, I told people I've been to revivals and I've had the spirit to move on me to give an offering, a big offering in some of them. I've had the spirit to move on me when I was at a missions conference. Of course, you go to a missions conference, you want to give everything anyway. You know, you, you don't have a trouble giving at a missions conference. But I have never had that experience, Pastor Greg. I've never sit in front of a television or an internet and had the Holy Ghost move on me and say, I want you to help them build that church. This is the most profound move of the Spirit. And I've come here and I've laid these on the altar. You know, when that little boy, I said it the other night, or maybe last night too, when that little boy came here, the little hole in this family, and they brought their children, each one of them been saving up their money, and that little boy, he brought his little $3 offering. Now, the secular world, the lost world, the world that don't know our God, would say, what is a $3 offering to an $18 million facility? But you know what? We read the Bible. And that's what they would say to a little boy's lunch. But Jesus said, if you'll give me what you got, I can make it bigger. So I don't know how he'll build it, but he will. <laughs> I said, I don't know how he'll build it, but he will.
don't believe we needed it, you weren't here this weekend. Believe it and receive it. And I don't know how he'll build it, but he will. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't even know how long ago. I want to give honor. I think the oldest one here tonight is Sister Emily at 94 years old from Hazard, Kentucky. Is where she's from originally, or Leslie County. I keep on making the mistake, and she'll tell me after it's over. She'll say, no, she's got Sizemore blood in her from Leslie County. So all the Sizemore from Sizemore, some Leslie and Clay stick together. But we just give honor to her tonight for coming out in the rain. I don't know how many years ago it was, but uh, I got a phone call, and they said, have you ever heard Greg Atkins? I said, no. And they said, well, we can't really pinpoint it down, but he's a mixture. Now, you got to remember, these are the three these were the three in the holiness movement, the Appalachian people. These are people you could not get a hold of. Harley Hensley, Johnny Carter, and Claude Ely. And all three of them. Harley Hensley came here in the 50s. I don't know if he hitchhiked or if he hitched a ride. I'm going to have to clarify that story. We've always told he hitchhiked. But I'd like to find out a real clarity about it. Either way, he didn't have a car. And he came when the church was right here, but we didn't have the top on it. We were Appalachian migrants and too poor to put the top on the church. So they covered it with plywood and put tar paper on top of it and sealed it up. And that was our church. And he come either hitchhiking and he told about how he went on top of that mountain in Harlan County and laser from heaven cut the cancer out of his body. It's the most profound. I'm going to tell you something. When we get in that new church, we got these screens that are so big. They better be big. They're $3 million. Not for the screens, but that's for all of the, all the sound, the electric, everything. It's just a, not electric, but the part, the AV department. It went from $1 million to $3 million in just two years. But it, it's, it's the kind of screens that'll make you feel you're there. I could be preaching on Pharaoh chasing the children of Israel and I could take a clip of that movie Moses and put it behind me. I could have those horses behind me while I'm preaching and some of you be scared to death. <laughs> but I was thinking, my mind's already got, I want to reenact when we get to the new sanctuary, I want to reenact the stories that we know. We can put that mountain right behind us. Micah Gillum, I don't know if Micah's here tonight, but I picked him out to be Harley Hensley so far. He's got the black hair. And uh, my grandpa was moved when he heard the brother Hensley's powerful testimony. And he handed him his keys to his car. Now, Dad, what kind of car was that? Buick. Buick. What year was it? Brand new. Brand new Buick. You remember that, Dad, don't you? How did it happen? Do you remember? Well, my father in law, Jonas, his dad had a car lot, used car lot. And when Brother Harley, he did hitchhike up from Harlan or wherever in. Uh, and so I remember doing so well. He just handed his key. He says, here, Brother Harley, you got a car now. That's been the habit. That's been the habit of holiness people, of Pentecostal people, of spirit-filled people, to obey the Spirit, to listen to God. So we were connected to Harley Hensley. Then in 1960, a young man came here by the name of Johnny Carter, you never in your life seen anything like Johnny Carter. Words cannot express it. He flowed in such an anointing, it was scary. And I preached for Brother Carter at the Highway of Holiness when he was there. 
He came in the early 60s and following him in the 60s came Claude Ely. Brother Claude, I preached for him when he was at Charity Tabernacle. And we all, he was good friends with Grandpa too. My grandpa was a friend to preachers. Now he never lived no, he, didn't, he lived a good life, but he wasn't no preacher. But he was good to preachers. And someone called me and they said, have you heard of Greg Atkins? I said, no. They said, well, you got to hear him. I've got a cassette. I think it was a cassette. Were you preaching with cassettes or was it CDs? Cassettes still. They said, I've got a cassette because he's a combination of Johnny Carter, Harley Hensley, and Claude Ely. And said, sometimes you close your eyes, you think it's Johnny. Now, Brother Greg, don't run these seats because they're not hooked to the floor. Johnny Carter was known to run the back of the seats and so did our pastor, Brother Gully. He could run them like nobody's business. The power of God would hit him and, and they knew it was coming. The people would just part. He'd go right down the middle, right back up. Don't ever try it. But we're so grateful tonight to have Pastor Greg Atkins and his wife. The last time his wife was here other than last night was when they had the service for her father, Phil Morris, and his family's all here. And I know it was difficult on them, and your mother's here somewhere. Where's she at? I've been looking all over for you. There she is. Why don't you just stand up there so we know who Jessica's mom is. There she is. We're so glad you're here. I didn't know Greg, but I knew Jessica from the time she was born. I knew her when she was a little bitty thing, little girl. And we're so grateful to have her and her, her children and how that God has blessed them. One more time, I want you to come. There's people anticipating, Brother Greg. And I love Jessica's hair. I just about have you stand up and say, look at that beautiful hair. But they'll see it after church. That'll give them something to stick after for. Hallelujah. Brother Greg, would you come on up? Let's give him one more welcome and his family. We love you, we love you, we love you. Praise the Lord. You glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? He brought back a memory to me. I, I, have, I ran the pews uh, one time. The Spirit of the Lord got on me, and I took off on the pews and got to the middle, and one of them wouldn't bolt it down. And a little old granny was in between them. And so when I got to that, it started to tilt over. And I remember, but I, I thought to myself, Lord, I've missed it now. But she, the Spirit was on her, and she was done dancing out the middle of it. She's done out in the aisle. And so the next time the Spirit of the Lord got on me in the middle of my preaching, I jumped up on some chairs type thing and before I knew I said hold on big boy come on back down <laughs> amen <laughs> praise God so you don't have to worry about that unless the Lord really speaks to me tonight <laughs> but uh, I'm so glad to be here in the house of the Lord I appreciate your pastor one of the greatest men of God I believe alive today can we give him a hand clap I often uh, message, I'll send a message to him and tell him how grateful I am as a young preacher uh, that he's been a constant, you know, in my life since I've met him and a constant in such changing times, he's not changed and I'm grateful for that and that's, that, that's not heard of a lot in today's hour, can we say amen, but we thank you Pastor Tommy for your constant in our lives, again let's let him know how much we appreciate him, amen. My daughter surprised me. She, I didn't think they were going to get to come, and uh, she didn't get to come up with us. She's in UAB College it's a, uh, for, uh, to be a doctor, and uh, her and her roommates, which are friends of hers from our church, they all get to room together, and they drove up just for tonight's service. Got to try and go back in the morning, but we're glad they're here. Amen. God has truly blessed us, blessed her. And uh, some of you may have seen a video that went viral. She's in the UAB Gospel Choir. 
And it's a very liberal college there. And uh, very liberal. A lot of atheists. Uh, and a lot of teaching goes on there that's uh, woke culture, stuff of that sort. So that video, what a lot of people don't understand is the congregation was not a church. It was not a service. It was a concert. They were atheists professor sitting there watching so what you see when the spirit of the lord began to move mildly was a major miracle in that house it was gospel choir there and they had sung uh, all the way back uh, years ago that all these people come up and said you woke up something inside of me that hadn't been woke up in years can you say amen? Praise God. God has been good to us. God has blessed us. I would like to say this. Some of you follow this too. We have uh, February was three years ago. Uh, this last February was three years ago that they called us. Uh, DHR Family Service called us with a two-day-old baby. And uh, we, we had no intentions of taking any babies at all but they called us and said would you be willing to take this two-day-old he was born on the side of the road uh his mom uh you know had been on a lot of drugs and said uh she's just left the hospital there's nothing nobody said but will you be willing to take him and uh we of course you know the lord you moved on us we said yes and so we we took him not knowing all that that would entail uh, but I am telling you what, for five months, tremoring for, for five minutes at a time, going through those withdrawals. And the doctor said, the only thing you can do is just hold him. There's no medicine. There's nothing we can do to help him. You just hold him. It won't take long. After a period of months, he'll get over it. Can you say amen? But then we noticed his communication was very, very uh, limited and handicapped. And so he didn't communicate. And so when I get home and I walk in my house, you know, when I reached to my other kids, they, daddy, and come running up and hug me, you know, type thing. But uh, that's not his world. His world's completely different than everybody else's. Uh, they think he's, uh, they say he's a uh, uh, level one autistic. And so uh, it was different. Learning has communication, but it was so precious at the same time, learning how he communicates with me. And so uh, when he did start communicating just a little bit, the best I get is when I walk in the house, he'll go, Daddy, and he'll run like he's running to me. Then he'll stop like he gets something else on his mind, and he'll run away. And that's the best I get. <laughs> but God is, uh, every week, every month, God is giving us blessings and blessings. And we believe God. This is my prayer. I said, I I'm, I'm not praying selfish prayers because I don't want to have to face all the stuff that goes with all of that because we love him with everything. But sin will not win. He, he's the victim of drugs and drug abuse. And I said that, God, you're not going to allow sin to win, but you're going to get glory through this. And so week after week, it's one thing after the other. But I'm telling you, uh, today, I, I, gave, I sent this video to him today uh, because of the hand of the Lord and Christian education we got this video. I wanted them to show it to you. Good job, Jason. What does John 1, 3 say? All. All things you may. I say. Very good. Good job, Jason. He's quoting scripture from memory. <laughs> Praise God. From no communication, not able to communicate, to quoting scripture by memory. Can we give God glory in this house? You rejoice with us tonight. Amen. Just see someone down on their knees Just as hawk into the air Words lost on a breeze Some just see teardrops Falling on the floor Just a waste of time It's not anything more 
believe that tonight? Come on, lift your heart with your hands and love him.
Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, when the, when the Lord starts moving like this, you, you have to move when the waters are troubled, as the Bible says. As the living water flows out of the body of Christ, we step into it. And so we're just so thankful for what's been happening. We believe that God has delivered and touched and done a great work here. Let's give God a great praise for that. Thank you, honey. Praise God. Aren't you grateful for the move of the presence of the Lord tonight? The old church would sing, reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. You'd find he's not too busy to hear your hearts cry. He's passing by this moment. Your need he will supply. Just reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Can you say amen? Praise God. What a wonderful atmosphere, the presence of the Lord tonight. I'd like to take a text and I the Lord to help me. I realize the time frame and then took up a little bit of our time in preaching. So I will not hold you as long. But I would like to say what I feel like the Lord has laid on my heart when Pastor Tom called me. I get the first of the year to be a part of this homecoming meeting. Uh, the Lord so impressed me, my heart. I get the first of the year the Lord dealt with me to deal with a subject at my church. And in the middle of dealing with that subject, the Lord began to speak to me personally, speaking to me in my own life, speaking to me and, uh, this summer, dealing with the body of Christ, dealing with ministry. As the beginning, the beginning of the year, the Lord began to deal with me concerning Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus is answering what would be the signs of the time. And what was going the end of times going to look like. And in that, the word, be not deceived, is written several times. Be not deceived, be not deceived, be not deceived. In the middle of that, it brings us to a scripture, Matthew, we'll start there, 24, verse 10 through 12. And this is what the scripture says, Matthew 10, 20, I mean Matthew 24 and 10, and then many, I want you to hear me tonight, I really feel like the Lord has uh, laid this on my heart so heavy. Then many, everybody shout many. Many will be offended and repelled and will begin to distrust and say amen. amen. The Bible says, let's, let's start in verse number 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows and then shall many be offended. And use this word, this is the King James here, and shall portray one another. Let's read that again. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. He's describing the end of day. This is the beginning of sorrows and shall many, many, say it again, many be offended. And they're going to betray one another. Another translation says it like this. And then many will be offended and repelled and will begin to distrust and desert him whom they ought to trust and obey. Because of the spirit of offense, hurt, Betrayal, they're going to cause us not to trust. And they will stumble and fall away and portray one another and pursue one another with hatred. And because of this, many false prophets will rise up and deceive and lead many into error and the love of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multiple multiplied lawlessness and iniquity another commentary that says then many will stop following me jesus says and fall away 
And they will betray one another and hate one another. And many lying prophets will rise, deceiving multitudes, leading them away from the path of truth. There will be such an increase of the sin of lawlessness that those whose hearts once burned with passion for God and others will grow cold. But hold your hope firmly to the end. And you will experience life and deliverance. Praise God. The love, the hearts that once burn with passion for God and others will grow cold. Another commentary says, and then going from bad to worse, it will be a dog-eat-dog world. Everyone at each other's throat. Selfishness. Everyone hating and hurting each other. Climbing on top of each other to reach their own thing. In the confusion. In the confusion. Why don't you read that with me? In the confusion, lion preachers will come forward and deceive a lot of people. For many others, the overwhelming spread of evil will do them in. Nothing left of their love but a mound of ashes. Satan wants our passion, our love. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter number 30, you can be seated. I'm just going to read some of this here. I want you to follow me and I lay this foundation and I'll talk to you for a moment. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter number 30, when God began to deal with me concerning the spirit of offense that's going to attack our world. It's going to plague the last days. Because when you are hurt, What you do with that hurt is vital. I want you to hear me. There are two categories when you begin to study all the resources you can find concerning offense and hurt. Two of the greatest modern day writers have written. Jensen Franklin wrote the book, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt. John Bevere wrote the book, The Bait of Satan. One of the finest books I've ever read concerning this. I've read the first few chapters of those in, in my past and then I went back to it to look at it again dealing with this because this is what he said is going to plague the last days. And because of offense and the portrayal and the hurt, men are going to begin to seek not for truth but for affirmation. They're going to seek for acceptance because of the need to feel Accepted to feel love because of the hurt. Because the problem is when you get hurt, and hurt is going to come. We find that in Luke chapter 17. It is needful, Jesus said, that offenses come. But woe from them from whence they come. Can you say amen? He said, it's needful that it comes. It's going to come. It, is, uh, it says, amen, it is impossible that it's not going to happen. It's going to take place. That you're going to be hurt in life. Man is a few days born and full of trouble. But the problem is what I do, the decisions you make are vital. Because when you're hurt, you begin to seek people that feel your pain. You are legitimate hurt. Now watch this. There, there are two different kinds of offended people. Now I hurt. this will hurt your feelings. And I don't want to hurt your feelings. But I'm here to help you right now. And I help, I help myself with this. And I help you with this. And help my church. But two categories of people. Those who are genuinely. That's been done wrong. And then there are those that are genuinely assumed. They were done wrong. Assumption. 80% of the stuff that we are hurt over is assumption. Well, you don't like that. I knew you wouldn't like that. It's the perception of rejection. I have been wounded and hurt, so I have this perception. Now everybody is after me. Everything is after me. Amen. And when that happens, the enemy knows 
that offense, that bait that John Bevere so brought out in his book is the bait that's on the trap, like the rat trap or the monkey trap. It's not the trap itself, it's the bait. The offense, that's where that word comes from, is the bait, amen, that's on the trap, like the cheese that's on the trap or whatever that you set forth to disguise the trap. The offense is the bait. So the offense happens genuinely the Bible teaches us what to do when it happens but it also teaches us amen if it's assumption how we ought to handle it as well but if I take the bait then I am trapped he said because of that in the last days amen deception is going to run rampant because when I'm hurt as a young man I become an older young man still with they did this to me Then I become a married man who says, they did this to me. You become a married woman. They did this to me. Then you have children that we raise that way. Then you become middle-aged. Then you become grandparents. If you never receive healing from the hurt, are you with me tonight? The enemy entraps your soul, entraps your heritage, Entrapped your seed. Amen. Amen. And when that happens, I begin to seek things to make me feel better about myself instead of seeking myself in the Word of God. One writer wrote it like this, and it's a powerful revelation. She, she was writing about her house and she said she was uh, remodeling her house and she had took out some things and thought she could take out the cabinets and take this out and take that out. And all of a sudden she got to a point in her house that she didn't know what to do. So she called a friend who sent a friend that was a contractor and knew what he was doing. And as soon as he walked into the house, he looked at her and he said, uh, ma'am, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you got major problems going on. She had took the sheetrock off. She had took the cabinets out and she said I, I just need somebody to tell me what to do with this one thing here and I'm going to read my, read doing this he said ma'am you can't go no further amen the beam that went across her house that was supposed to go to the load bearing wall amen was three foot short of the load bearing wall and the people that originally had built it instead of putting the beam and fixing the beam to go all the way across they nailed two by fours to it to put it over amen to reach the load bearing wall and he said I I'm telling you right now, you can't go any further till you fix that. She said, I'm looking up at that. And he said, come here, let me show you. We went upstairs. He said, he went to the very spot where that was. And he said, watch this. And he did just, just a little bit of jump. And the wall, the, the, the floor shook just a little bit. And he said, you see this? It's way too weak. This is so dangerous. Uh, she said, sir, all I want to do is just fix what I've got. I don't want to do all this major construction. That was never my intention. I just want to fix it. And once I get it fixed, I can put back the sheet rock. He said, ma'am you can't go any further like this we have got to get the beam to go to the low barren wall you can't just put two by fours and expect the structure to stand Come on, somebody. I come to tell you tonight, there are so many things in our lives that we've allowed. Come on, somebody, to stay where it is. And we think we can come to church and put two or three two-by-fours on it. Amen. And bring it to the part that it needs and go on with our lives. But I'm here to tell you tonight, Jesus is wanting to heal the wound. Jesus is wanting to heal. Amen. The offense in your heart. He wants to replace it with the truth of his word. Amen. One of our presidents uh, uh, that got shot, the wound, uh, the the bullet did not uh, uh, kill him. It was not the the bullet that killed him, but it went into his body and lodged uh, behind the pancreas. Uh, But back then, they didn't have all the things they have medically, amen, to keep him protected from the germs. uh, And they were digging all around in there, trying to get it and fix it and get it out. And in doing so, he didn't die from the bullet wound. Uh, He died from the gangrene in the inf- amen that all, all of the stuff the infection that got in there because they were digging around in it uh, I tell you we dug around with stuff in our lives uh, trying to fix it uh, trying to find stuff to fix it uh, are you hearing me but there is he 
healing for the hurting. You can't just go on with it. Jesus says, I can put my finger on it and I can heal it. Isaiah chapter number 30 and verse number 26 says these words. Powerful. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. The moon that is not as bright as the sun is going to become as bright as the sun. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. And meaning in one day the moon's going to shine as bright as the sun and the sun's going to shine seven days of sunlight. When? What? In the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their womb. Somebody lift your hands and say heal me God. Moreover, the light of the moon will be like the light of sun. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold like the light of seven days concentrated into one. And the day that the Lord binds up the hurt of his people and heals their wound. Another commentary, God will provide rain for seed. For your seed you sow. The grain that grows will be abundant. Your cattle will range far and wide. Oblivious to war and earthquake. The oxen and the donkeys you use for hauling and plowing will be fed well. Near running brooks that flow freely from the mountains and hills. But better yet... Praise God. This is a prophecy here. Better yet, on the day God heals his people of the wounds and the bruises from the time of punishment, moonlight will flare into sunlight. And sunlight, like a whole week of sunshine at one time, is going to flood your land. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we begin to look throughout the Bible, we find a story. The Bible, I begin to see this and I'd never noticed this this way and, it, and it's rocked my world when, amen, I heard a statement made so it made me go into investigation concerning this. But in Numbers chapter 3, Korah, the Bible that has the great ugly chapter of chapter 16 of Numbers, where the Bible says the earth opened up and swallowed them up. It's a great, ugly chapter. But yet, it, where did it start? How did it get its place? When you begin to study that and look at that, Korah should have been in line to be the chief. But Korah was not picked. Korah was not chosen. For some reason, we do not know. Nothing says why Korah was not chosen. Nothing tells us, amen, what was wrong with Korah's life, that he would not have been chosen. But in the line of things, it looks like he should have been the one chosen, but he wasn't. Aaron was chosen. And the Bible said that Korah in chapter 16, after those three from chapter 3 on, that, that welled up in Korah's heart and Korah's life. And the Bible says that in chapter 16 in verse number 1, it matters when you begin to look at the names of the people as pastor preached last night about the names mean something, the genealogies. He said last night in that it means something because it tells us something. Korah joins up with two men who were sons of Reuben. When you hurt, and it's intentional hurt or assumption hurt. Are you with me tonight? Whether it's 87% of the assumption or it was legitimate hurt. This is how you have... Look at what Korah did. The Bible said she connected with Reuben's sons. Why does that matter, Pastor? Because it matters who you connect with. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere tonight. I promise you. Korah connects with the sons of Reuben, which are no principle, no conviction. Do what you want to do. Whatever satisfies you. You go back and look at the prophecy concerning his life when his daddy blesses him on the deathbed. He said, you were this and this and this. You had the potential to be this and this and this. But, but Reuben, 
You are unstable as water. You have no conviction. You have no principle. I'm telling you tonight, if you get wounded or you're hurt or you're offended, the worst thing you can do on this earth is connect with people with no principle. People with no conviction. You do not need to join forces with people that have no principle. And that's what the enemy want you to do. You need to get beside that mama of God, that granny of God, that'll look at you and say, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You need to get, amen. It's the worst thing you can do is stay out of church. It's the worst thing you can do to break away from the people of God. You need to get yourself surrounded, not with people that agree with you, but people that will look at you and say, it was needful that this came. Come on, somebody. But all things work together for the good to them who love the Lord. I know the pain is deep, but you're going to come out of this. I know the hurt is deep. I know the betrayal is deep. But you rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. You need people that will speak into your life. Principle. Conviction. Not people of no principle. Not people of no conviction. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to make it. But you can't stay hurt. You're going to make it. But you can't stay hurt. You, you, you're you going to make it. You're going to get up from this. Though I fall seven times, yet I shall arrive. Praise God. It ain't always going to be like this. It ain't always going to be like this. Turn around and tell three people around you It ain't always going to be like this it ain't all, You ain't always going to cry yourself to sleep You're going to make it You're going to come out I'm going to walk right out of this valley Lift my hands and praise the Lord Ain't going to let old Satan get me down I said I'm going to walk right out of this valley Lift my hands and praise the Lord Ain't going to let old Satan get me down Find you somebody with principle Be like my great aunt that lived out behind me when I was a young teenage boy, my mom would make me mad. She would hurt my feelings. I'm telling you, I was a Christian, born again. She wouldn't, and boy, I'd, I'd tell you what. Every time she didn't do what I wanted her to do, I'd say, see, God, she needs deliverance. She needs saving. That's what her problem is. And boy, I'd be so upset and so mad she wouldn't let me go to church. Because I had school the next morning, I'm going to go two hours away. She said, you can't go tonight, son. I'd go to my room, I'd cry and pray and talk to God. And when I'd get done, he never showed up. <laughs> and when he did, he said, get up. Go tell your mama you're sorry for the attitude you had. I said, uh-uh, Lord, she did it to me. But I'd go out to my dear old... Holy Ghost field, fire baptized, great aunt. And I'd say, I'm going to spend that with her. And I'd go out and pour it all out to her. Mama this, mama that, because God ain't listening. <laughs> She'd rock in that rocking chair. She said, but baby. She'd say, I understand. She said, but you can't let that get in your heart. You're going to have to not let that settle down in your heart. I feel the Holy Ghost going to help us here tonight. Kor joined himself with Reuben's no principle. Then the next decision he makes is this. He joins, has him join up 250 princes, well-known men who were uninformed or misinformed. And they become a prey against Moses. They're following Korah but don't know why they're following Korah. 
They're uninformed or misinformed. But they parade. You better know who you're following. You better know who you're following. Come on, somebody. Here's the other thing. I'm not going to stay here long tonight. But the Bible says that Korah still got to be in the house of God. He still got to be around the table of shoe bread. He still got to, to help in the tabernacle. He just didn't get to be over it. He still got to be in the presence of God. He still got to be within the, the veil of the ark. But yet, Korah was not over it. And that wound was so deep that Korah couldn't shake it. Because if you're hurt and you don't get healing, you will focus on what's been done to you instead of the blessings that God gives you. You will be more focused on what they did than what God is doing. You'll be more focused on what's happening versus what God is doing in your life. Come on, somebody. That's one reason why I constantly look at what God is doing in my children. I constantly look at that. Because when the enemy gets the best of me, and he messes with my mind, and he gets me focusing on all the stuff, come on, somebody. He'll get me to begin to wrestle, as the man of God said last night, doubting myself. But then I begin to look at the fruit in my life. And when you start looking at the fruit... in my city right now is a great tragedy. It, 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 the, the enemy has wrecked havoc because of a system. They've hired a new principal that's come in to make a difference. He's come in and he's made changes. He's come in and he set rules and boundaries. And in that rule and boundaries, it's no more hoodies. You can't wear hoodies in the high school. 90% of the high schools in my county, you can't wear hoodies. But they could wear hoodies. He come in and said, no hoodies. Well, a young girl in that school wore a hoodie one day. And in that, she was asked to take the hoodie off. He being a new principal the second day of school, he didn't know anything about her or anything about her past. And I'm not here to defend him or not defend him, but it's news everywhere. But he had made her take the hoodie off. But she had been the victim of bullying and had already had some major issues of being bullied. So when he made her take the hoodie off, some young ladies made statements to her that caused her. And the second day of school this year, she committed suicide the next morning. Now the news and social media is what it is. And it's went rampant. But I'm telling you right now, what the devil intends for evil, God means for good. It, that what the enemy didn't bank on. Come on, somebody. When he maneuvered his way in was that God was going to rise up some people that was going to say, we're not going to let the evil take over our school. Come on, somebody. We're not going to let evil take over our school. We're not. And all of a sudden now you're having shirts that cause the name of the city and says strong. But more than that, what the enemy didn't bank on. See, the enemy doesn't bank on you getting up. The enemy doesn't bank in on you forgiving. The enemy doesn't bank on you letting it go. The enemy don't bank. Come on, somebody. He wants you to be like Cora. But the enemy didn't bank on, amen, a, a young Baptist pastor in our city. Amen. Come on, who's young? Young, and just been pastoring that church a little over a year says you know what we're going to do we're going to have fifth quarters which is normal for football right amen but he gets in there and starts having a fifth quarter in the middle of this this chaos and this darkness and I'm telling you right now the darkness is no match for the light and the darkness only exists from the absence of light but when that young Baptist hungry for God preacher amen started a fifth quarter the first Friday night, come on with worship, amen, they weren't many there, but the second Friday night, amen, are you with me? Some of them that were not really into all of that were trying to have a party on the other side of town, but the majority that would have went there decided to go to the fifth quarter. 
And what they didn't intend on was the Holy Ghost falling on hungry hearts and unlearned children's hearts. And the next thing you know, praise and worship went from just praise and worship to a Pentecostal move of the Spirit of God. Right in the middle of the high school floor where the enemy set for destruction. The next week, now don't so guess what? That that second week, Amen. The boys are having their thing on the other side of town. Amen. Was waiting on everybody to come where they were at. Found out they wouldn't come, and so they ended up coming there. And the next week, some of them that was in that core group is now in the middle of the floor, weeping and praying and crying and worshiping. Are you with me tonight? And so now, instead of having fifth quarters, it's broke out into revival. And so we're not having, it's only supposed to be on home games, but now we're having it on Thursday night before the God the away game because there's such a hunger and such a stirring and such a feeling. I am telling you, we're living in the day of hurt. We're living in the day of offense. But if we know where to take our pain, we know where to take our hurt. I'm getting next to somebody with principle. I'm going to look at the blessings. Because I want you to hear me now. I'm trying to get to the hurry of this part right here. Amen. Because there's another story by the name of Joseph. Anybody knows what happens to Korah? Amen. All of them end up dying. All of them end up being swallowed up. Amen. But you know what Moses did before that? He said, put incense in your hands, Korah. He said, get that incense in your hand and come around. And he's, you know what he was saying? If I can get you around the altar, Korah, maybe I can save your life. But Korah stayed with the revenge and the bitterness and the hatred. It'll come down on your children. I'm telling you, it'll cost you far more to get up than it will to stay down. It'll cost you far more to stay down than it will to get up. You may have to swallow your pride, but it's worth it. Peter, you may have to swallow your pride, but it's worth it. You don't have to be a Judas. Peter, you can crawl back into the upper room, swallow your pride, and let God do what he wants to do in your life. The Bible said that Joseph was loved by his brothers. Amen. Are hated by his brothers, loved by his daddy. You know the story. I don't have time for it tonight. They hated him because he was a dreamer. They hated him because of the dreams that was in his heart and in his life. Because I'm here to show you right here in the next 10 minutes that that's what the enemy wants is your dream. The enemy doesn't care that you're still here. He just don't want you dreaming. Because the Bible said Joseph had a dream. And in that dream, Joseph dreamed. uh, Amen. You know the story about how the brothers are going to bow down. Then he, And the Bible said they hated him for it and despised him for it. But yet he dreamed again. And then the Bible says, uh, amen, that this time he's on his way to his brothers in a hurry of the story. And they look up and say, here comes that dreamer. Making fun, mocking him as a dreamer. I I was reading that and I was studying it to preach, amen, this about the offense part of Joseph and how Joseph was intentionally wounded and intentionally hurt, but how he handled himself. And I'm walking up the side aisle of my church when the Spirit of God spoke to my heart, amen, I was flipping through something to find something else, and I come across the part where the Bible says, they said, here comes that dreamer, and they plotted to kill him. And these words, Brother Patrick, wrung my heart and the Spirit of God spoke to me, amen, so vividly when they said we shall see what will become of his dreams we shall see what becomes of his dreams one translation says it like this we'll see what becomes of his dreams we'll see what becomes of his dreams and then they said we're going to show him his dreams are useless 
Then another translation says, we will see what his dreams amount to. Is anybody hearing me tonight? And the Lord began to deal with my heart. The enemy is after your dream. He's not after the fact that you're still here. He's not after the fact that you're still pastoring. He's not after the fact, come on, I made it. I'm a survivor. Do I got any survivors in the house? But I heard the Spirit of God speak to me, and this is what I've come with here tonight. Amen. I, God didn't come just for me to be a survivor. He said, what shall become of his dreams? Uh, he said, you hear the enemy saying that to you? Have you heard the enemy whispering that to you? Come on, we shall see what shall become of his dreams. Uh, there's some of you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Uh, amen. You may be in the, the halftime of your life. And the enemy saying, we shall see what shall become of his dream. In football, you have the pregame warm-up that comes out and you exercise and you go through your drills. I come to tell you, you young people in this house tonight, you may feel like you're in the middle of halftime of your life, but you ain't even started the game yet. Josh's wife spoke to me last night. She said, Pastor Atkins, I'm so excited. She said, when you first come here, I was in my first year of junior high uh, uh, in this church. She said, you come. And she said, you were such a blessing in my life. She said, now you're here again. And my son is in his first year of junior high. You know what the enemy will like to do to you kids and you young people? He likes to make you think it's over. How can it be over? And the game ain't even started yet. Amen. Some of you are in the first quarter of your lives. Some of you are in the second quarter of your lives. But if you know anything about football, it's the last minutes of the first quarter and the first four minutes of the second quarter that matters because you're figuring out what they're doing in the last four minutes or the first part and you're figuring out what you're going to do with your team in this halftime. Amen. You're going to go in halftime. You're going to rearrange some things. You're going to take your weak players, move them here, put your strong players here and you're going to come back out uh, and in the fourth, third and fourth quarter, uh, you're going to make a difference. Uh, I come to tell you here tonight, here and on the waves of the internet, it ain't over for your life. Uh, what shall become of his dreams? Uh, what's going to become of his vision? Uh, what's going to become of what God spoke to him? Somebody shout, it's just the first quarter. It's just the second quarter. What shall we whisper to your neighbor? What shall become of these dreams? The enemy wants your dreams. He wants your vision. He wants your passion. That's what he said in the last days. The many are going to lose their passion. Lose their love. Lose their fire. Lose that passion to worship. That passion to preach. That passion to sing. That passion to pray. You're still here, but not with the same passion. You're still singing, but not with the same passion. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to show you what's going to become of my dream. So they throw him in a pit, sell him to, to slavery, take him down to Potiphar. You know the story, it's all bad. But I ain't got time to get into it tonight. But I'm going to tell you something. It ain't coincidence this man of God was showing this again tonight. It ain't coincidence that he was not just showing this. But I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of battles from here to there. There's a lot of battles from this to that video. And there's still some battles from this to that video that's going to take place. Come on, somebody. But there's one thing for sure. I'm not settling. The Bible said when you don't have vision, the people perish. You know what that means? That's not just talking about a vision for something to happen. It also means, uh, amen, that when I don't got my eyes uh, set on what God has promised me uh, and prophesied to me, then I will lose my way. Uh, I'll become flat-eyed. Uh, I'll become settled. Uh, I'll become satisfied. Uh, but I come to tell you, you need to stand up in your spirit tonight and say, not only am I still here, but I'm not settling for anything left. Yeah.
I had the privilege of being here before the change and getting to be here and experience. And then videos that are floating around of that old services y'all had where y'all dancing and pra praising God and people commenting. Amen. Still that way today. Still worshiping today. Amen. I love all that, but you don't know what? The enemy was after the dream. I remember him talking about the stories of the dreams of them people from Appalachia dreaming and how this all come to pass and it all started with a dream. I come to tell you the purpose of your dream is bigger than you. That's why you got to make it. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not here to brag on her and brag on the anointing on her life. It's evident. But I come to tell you, that didn't come without a sacrifice and that didn't come without payment. I can go back in my life and count the numerous times uh, that I wanted to throw my hands up, uh, get bitter, and quit. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, but I knew the price uh, that I would have to pay would be greater than the price to swallow my pride and keep marching. Swallow my pride like I've never been hurt. Swallow my pride like I've never been betrayed. Lift your hands all over this house. Say I'm going to serve like I've never been hurt. I want to love like I've never been hurt. I want to worship. Woo! Hallelujah! Somebody shout it out. right now I don't got time to get off on the other stuff but this one I'm going to tell you Peter stood up in the midst of the tongue talking outpouring and they said what meaneth this what meaneth this they're drunk but it's the third hour of the day there's significant words right here this is that that the prophet Joel dreamed about he looked around at the other 120 he said we're standing in the middle of what Joel saw what Moses saw what Abraham saw we're in the middle of that I come to tell you community See it all, but you are in the middle of that. You're in the middle of that. This is that. This is that. This is that. The Holy Ghost on the 70 elders in the book of Numbers. Two of them didn't show up. 
And about that time, one of the men ran out and said, Moses, we got problems. Because the spirit had fell, a prophecy fell on 70. Except two that didn't show up. He said, we got two men that ain't in here with y'all out there in the middle of the camp prophesying. They're out there prophesying like y'all prophesy. We need to get things in order. Tell them they don't need to be out there, need to be in here. Moses said, I would to God. <laughs> that not only they were prophesying, but I would to God that everybody in this camp was a prophesying. Stretch your hands to your man of God. Stretch your hand to the men and women of God in this house and prophesy. And say, I would to God that not only pastor prophesied, but everybody in the town prophesied. You know what Peter was saying? Guess what? This is that. Moses, it's happening. I'm done. If you want to dream again, make your way to this altar. Lift your hands. This is that. I don't think you heard him. He said, if you want your dream back, make your way up here. Glory. Oh, it will pass. Sun will break through.
Praise the Lord. Start all, start all over, Mom. Just God wants to heal every wound, every hurt in this building tonight. Give it to Him. Years ago, it just about, it came to my mind. I was only 18 years old, and I was hurt bad. I was hurt real bad. And I was a little bitter at first. And I wasn't going to come to church anymore. God, the devil was trying to destroy this from the beginning. <laughs> still praying and I even knew the pastor he was a good man I knew he was going to say Janice ain't you going to come aren't you coming back they didn't know what I was heard about and and I already made it my I said what I was going to say to him I was going to say no I'm not coming back (laughs) and that's just what I did but that wasn't in my heart and I went praying every night when I was praying in the house and I seen I, I, I knew it wasn't right for me to do this I had to get rid of it so finally in prayer I said I will swallow my pride I will forgive I will forget I don't expect no t- no apologies I'm going back and I'm taking my place in the church hallelujah glory to God hallelujah hallelujah don't hold on to hurts hurts are dangerous He told us how bad they can be. Uh, And hurt people, a lot of times will hurt other people. Offenses must come. Now as much as I can remember from my heart, I don't remember telling my hurt to anybody. I really don't. But God. (laughs) He's a good God. He loves you. He loves us. (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. And he, and he loves the people who hurt you. <laughs> yes. Woo. Glory to God. I guess I'm done. <laughs> I don't know if you are or not, Mom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It will pass. The sun will break through. The clouds are going to roll back like the sea. Glory to God. Brothers, lay hands on them. I want to ask you a question. What would have happened if she had a quit at 18 years old? There's a good chance none of this would have been here. He wouldn't have been here. That's not the only time. Many things. But God, I want to know what your swallowing your pride and forgiving has got waiting on you. If her swallowing hers and getting it right at 18 had all this in the future, come on somebody, then what is depending on you swallowing your pride and forgiving and forgetting and going on about your business? Don't let it get in your heart. It's bigger than you. The purpose is bigger than you. The future is bigger than you. I've never told this, and I'm not going to tell the whole story. 
I got on fire in 1972. From 1972 till 1981, I knew nothing but victory. Nothing but victory. I was already preaching youth camps, camp meetings. I was a school teacher. I was going up the ladder of success. I was already put in as curriculum development for Grant County. But on my way up Piner Hill to teach at Crenton and Mount Zion, the Holy Ghost spoke to me, said, you've known nothing but great success, but I must let you suffer. He said, you will think I left you. That's all the story I'm telling. That was in January, April 15th. My world crushed, stayed crushed, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. Never had a breath of fresh air till Peggy Richards came here. And we had a supernatural explosion. I lived every day, every day, saying I will forgive. I will forgive. I will forgive. I never felt anything. I never got close to people. I feel sorry for the people in the church from 1981 to 1985. I feel sorry for them. I got anointed preaching. That's a strange thing, brother. I got anointed preaching and I got anointed singing. But it never changed what was on the inside. It stayed ripped. It stayed ripped for years. And it wasn't assumption. It was the real deal. And tonight, you'll never get anywhere. If we have not heard such a divine word from heaven, and it's been confirmed by the Spirit of God and by the elders of this wonderful word, I want us right now, as we're, and you watching by internet, this isn't just for us here in Independence, Kentucky. When you were preaching, I heard Jude. Jude said, the apostate church, you're going to know them. Whoa, they have gone the way of Korah. He said, they've gone the way of Korah. They've allowed their feelings to overtake them. They've gone the way to Cain, they've gone the way of Balaam. But he, it's prophesied in the Bible in the last days. And I want us right now to give me about a key of A minor. This is an old song. You know, this is one of the this is one of the songs. I've been going to Israel since 1972. And the first time I was at the Vatican in the catacombs, they said this is the only known song from the first century church, the only known song. And they began to sing it when we were there in the Vatican. This is the song they sang in the first century when the lions were eating them, when their babies were covered with animal skins and eaten by wild beasts, when they took their parents and grandparents and dipped them in oil, burnt them as human torches. They were singing, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will one. They said, we pray that one day our unity will be restored. 
They were praying for this second outpouring, the prophetic word of Joel, that in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. This is where we are. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we sing this ancient song of your triumphant church, I'm asking you, God, to let the agape, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love. Let the love of God overtake us in such a way it's incomprehensible. We'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Let's sing it one more time. Oh, we are one. Give him one more praise tonight. Hallelujah. We praise you. Brother Greg, Pastor Greg, we cannot thank you enough for your obedience. Thank God for all that singing and shouting, but this will put more singing and shout in us. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God for that. We'll see you tomorrow night. We have Bishop Mar Marvin Winans coming. And we're, not, we're, we're only singing two songs, and we're turning it right over to him. So get here early to get a good seat. Tell Brother Greg how much we love that message tonight. And you're singing, honey. And I know your name, but it's just slipping me. Huh? So thankful, honey. You're going to be a doctor? I don't even go to doctors much, but I, I, I think I'd... I'd like a praying doctor. Wouldn't you like one like that? We'll see you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. You on the internet. You need to call somebody and tell somebody to join us online. More than ever, this generation desperately needs to know the Word of God. I am so thankful that Pastor Tommy Bates preaches on compromised truth that by the power of the Holy Spirit is able to set this generation free. We continue to receive countless testimonies of salvation, healing, deliverance, and many miracles that the Lord is doing through this ministry. By His grace, we are believing for many more. The message of Jesus is going around the world and lives are being transformed. We invite you to partner with Tommy Bates Ministries as you feel led by the Holy Spirit as we glorify Christ and continue to advance His kingdom together. To partner or contact Tommy Bates Ministries, visit TommyBates.com or write us at P.O. Box 30, Independence, Kentucky, 41051. Or call 1-866-411-1032.